88.2 Sanyu FM. I hope you're good enjoying your Saturday wherever you are, whatever you're up to. I'm Crystal on the Hit Selector and as always I have someone special sitting down with me on Celeb Select. Today I would like to introduce Timothy Code. Now, you know most Ugandans, they're called Timothy's. Timo. Yeah. Do people call you Timo? Everyone in the, my secondary school, Timo. There's some girls that try to call me Timmy as not having it. Timmy? Like, yeah. No, Timmy. Because of passion, you know, the, the telenovela. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not having it. <laughs> so, yeah, Timo has come through. Uh -huh. My mom still calls me that. Oh. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, then uh, Timothy Code came in. Okay, Timothy yeah. Code. And how then did, Timothy how did you Code get to Timothy Code, though? Code. It, it's a long journey. Mm -hmm. um, my first stage name was uh, Rico. Rico. Rico, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not from Puerto Rico, huh? mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I'd like to say I was one of those first kids, the first ones on Facebook that was inspired by so many things, you know, out there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, let me get a really out there name. Okay. You know? So that was the first name. And a couple of songs that I did when I began uh, rapping were under that moniker. Okay. How old were you then? Uh, say 2011, give or take seven years from now, that's about 17. Okay, 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, okay, you know we've already jumped to high school. No, 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 mm. that's pull Russian. Up. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Uh-huh, yeah. tell us, were you born here? Yes, I was born here. I was born in uh, Mulago. Mm -hmm. I am in a family of three. Okay. Uh, older sister, older brother, and So you're the mom. baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel it? No, I don't. Are you treated special? I used to be. Okay. Now Not anymore. It, now it's like, yo, you're grown. Even with your mom? You're grown. You know, I think with women, once the baby, always the baby. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only one who's like, don't move out. <laughs> don't move out. Just, yeah, but uh -huh. I'm pretty sure uh, for her, it's uh, different. Okay. I feel for her, you know, now she's like, oh, he's growing into his own man. Person, yeah. So, um... It's not. It's not a case of ah. Let me hold on to him longer. Now she's like, do you? Okay. Just go out there, fly. That's oh. when you throw the baby ego out. Mm -hmm. Now fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. So born in Uganda. Uh. Real name Timothy Muhumuza. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Family of three. Uh. Dad was around for a while. Then, you know, passed on. Oh, so sorry about that. Nah, cool. How old were you? Uh, it was in 2000, June of 2000. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So basically grew up with mom, single mom. Yes. And uh, yeah, the family was very supportive, man. They played, they filled in all the gaps. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So I was never... So you never felt like you missed the father figure? No, it, it comes in once in a while. You know, every man needs another man to teach them. Yeah. So in, in certain cases, you feel like I want to have a mentor to teach me. But then, you know, I had a bigger brother. So mm -hmm. he stepped in and, you know, basically gave me that extra shoulder from a brotherly level and also what a father would have done. Okay. So, mm -hmm. nah, no gaps. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. You're grateful. Yes, sir. I love the sound of that. Where did you go to school? Uh, started off in uh, Kampala Habitats up here mm -hmm. and then uh, went to Aga Khan. Then mm -hmm. went to Kampala Parents, then went to Green Hill, then went to Makere College, then came back to Green Hill. Yeah, it's a bit of a journey. Why, 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 why all Mom the moving wanted around? Me to follow my brother. Oh. He went to Kampala Parents. He's like, oh, you need to leave Aga Khan. Go to Kampala Parents. Be with your brother. Hmm. Then I was like, nah, it's not working for me, so I want to move. Go to Green Hill. Okay. So once I finished, I you know, did my primary seven there. She's like, you should go to Macquarie College. Why? Because your <laughs> brother's in Macquarie College. <laughs> well, so, she's thinking, you know, big brother will protect you. Yeah, you. yeah, probably that. And then she's like, yeah, let's do that. Then it got to the point of like, I can't keep following him. Okay. And he's also like, I don't want my little brother tagging around all the time. He's also trying to be his own man. Mm. So that's the case. So after uh, my senior four, went to Green Hill, came back to Green Hill because I loved the school. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. then from Green Hill, mom was like, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to McCary University? You know, the top, the oldest university oh, in the yes. country. Yes. I was like, nah. <laughs> 
I want to go to Uganda Christian University. Okay. Mukono. All right. So I was like, let me go all the way that side. Why did you go to UCU? Why Why did you pick it? One, I hated the strikes. There's too, MOOC oh. has just too much. Yeah, there's it's a like, lot of drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And two, I wanted that distance away from home because there's always that boarding school was in town. For me, for all my schools, they were in town. Mm -hmm. So it was never like I was away from home. So Mukono was like, if you're going to pursue law, you're going to do it better there in a more conducive, quieter environment. And then when you have to come back home, you'll be, oh, yeah, I need to come back home. Oh, but when okay. you're there, you're independent. Hmm. Yes, that kind of thing. So basically, you wanted to be as far away from home as possible. Possible. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing this fight for independence I started a long time ago. Very, very, very. I've been... Uh, Why? Is that the person you are? You like your own space? You like your own company? Everyone tells me that. I, they oh. say, how do you not have friends? How do you not have this hey, hey, friend? Let's wait. Do what do you mean you don't have friends? No, I have friends. I have okay. friends. But I won't say I have a close friend. Oh. Yeah. I've, I've been very independent most of my life. I so don't know, do maybe you enjoy spending time like at home alone? I do. You don't I turn do. up? I do. I do. Hey, Crystal, let's, let, let's not go to the Instagram. <laughs> I'm like, mm, let's not go on the Snapchat. I know different. Let's not go on the Snapchat. But um, <laughs> I, I, I do go out a lot. And I do go out with people who I consider my friends. Some of them are my colleagues. Mm. But I don't have a very close attachment to someone that like it's never I've never been in that position yet so this is even like in school going back you don't have yeah. like a guy who's like your boy no, no, I have them I have okay. my boys okay. I have my boys okay yeah but I don't say yeah this is the number one this guy knows me in and out and whatever <laughs> yeah what are you hiding Nothing. I'm very mysterious that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People would like to say they're mysterious. Which is a good because thing. They're tricky things. It's intriguing. Like, what are you hiding? I'm not hiding anything. Think about it, Crystal. If I put everything out there on a plate, which I will eventually, people will be like, okay, now we know everything. So what? We're moving on. Yeah, we're moving on. <laughs> let's, let's be like, oh, he, he said this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of thing. Okay, all yeah. right. So you did UCU, you said law? Yes, studied law, Bachelor of Laws, LLB, graduated 2016. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dude, that's just like two, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So when you started, you talked about high school, mm -hmm. and that's when your love for, especially hip hop, because you, you're a musician, and yes, I am. nearly every musician likes different influences and genres, mm -hmm. but hip hop is your baby, right? Mm -hmm. How far back did you know this? Um, further than when I started rapping. Oh. I've been a lover of music for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, there's a picture uh, I have at home of me, I think, on my second birthday. My dad gave me uh, a suit. Have you seen the Michael Jackson video for Smooth Criminal? Yes, yes. White suit, uh -huh. blue. Yeah, now there's a picture of me with the coat off, the white coat off, just the blue shirt and the white pants on, and me holding the coat. <laughs> <laughs> so that for me is like my earliest memory because they knew I loved Michael Jackson a lot. And then hip hop came in. I was never a fan of dancehall, reggae, rather, mm -hmm. which, which is very un Ugandan. I know. Everyone loves it in, in their chidongo. <laughs> but um, <laughs> personally, for me, hip hop was more attractive. Not because of the lifestyle, but because of what they were saying. I would look at Jay Z and I'm like, okay, he's saying something. He's not. You know, yeah. patois. Hip hop is storytelling. It is. It's like it is. another level of storytelling. It is. It's so intricate. And I feel like even when I went to high school, I studied literature. I studied it for that reason to understand words better. Hmm. So well, like, speaking of hip hop and looking at your request, I mm -hmm. think that's going to reflect. So I'm going to ask you now for your first song. First song. Mm. Uh, this is a song I listen to currently, very currently, very a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm, every day I'm plugged in with earphones. I go to work listening to this song. This is a J. Cole ATM. Okay. It's off his uh, latest album, mm -hmm. KOD. Uh, Which is also very deep. It's also very <laughs> deep. It's very deep albums. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. It talks about uh, money, you mm -hmm. know, the pursuit for money. What are you willing to do to chase the money? And should the money change you? You know, should you chase the money? Should the money chase you? I know that it's difficult. I'm stacking this paper. It's sort of habitual. I blow the residual. It's a hit selector on 88.2 San UFM, and with me on Celeb Select today, I have Code. Yes. You said you're just going with Code right now. No, I am Timothy Code. I used to just go by Code. 
When was this? Because you said you, you first uh, Timothy Code, then you went to Code, now you're back to Timothy Code? Yes. Aww. This is why. Um, I started off with Rico. Rico was not me. It was a made up name. It's like, um, what can I call it? It's like Nick Minaj for Onika. Have you oh, seen yes, it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's made up. Okay. So I wanted something that is more of myself. So in high school, a few of my friends actually used to call me a uh, code name Rico. The uh, three. Okay, okay, okay. I'm getting so I was like, Timothy, code name Rico. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me cut the Rico out. Cut the name mm -hmm. out. Let me leave code. It's like, why code? That's the question. It's an abstract name. Mm -hmm. As an entertainer, I could put it in any field and it would still stick. You could be called the artist. Mm -hmm. You could be called the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You could be called the fashion designer. You could be called the producer. Okay, you could okay. be called the writer. That, that makes sense. It's abstract. It doesn't fit anywhere, mm -hmm. but it applies everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're a lover of hip hop. You're mm -hmm. an artist as well. Yes. You're just talking about J. Cole and uh, how you pay attention to the lyrics and mm -hmm. how um, you even studied literature because you wanted to understand the power of language mm. and communication because mm. at the end of the day you have to communicate right yes yes so you're also on tv another avenue when yeah. did you start tv same year i graduated okay because i feel like it's a blessing in itself mm. um i literally graduated this week two weeks later i was on tv well, did someone get in touch with you, or yes, did you yes. pursue it? Uh, DJ Bush Baby. He hit me up. He was like, you know, I actually started speaking to him before I left uni. So I'm very interested in TV. He's like, you're a lawyer. Why are you interested in TV? <laughs> I was like, no, but this is my passion. He's like, yeah, I'm a rapper as well. Like, okay, let's give a guy a chance. Um, so two weeks, and I've been bugging him the whole time. I'm like, Bush, I'm about to graduate. Bush, I'm doing my finals. Bush, Whoa. what's happening? Whoa. Uh, when can I come in? And then two weeks later, after I graduated, he's like, you know, come in, let's do uh, a screen test. So we did the screen test. He's like, you liked it. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the show called The Hood, The Hood Issues and Requests. Mm -hmm. I used to go around to different neighborhoods, just getting to know people. Ah, okay. And I loved the exposure. And of course, the very first show had to be in my hood, Boonga. Mm -hmm. So I go to Boonga, I go to the church, I speak to people. And I loved the vibe, getting to know people, because everywhere I went was a different, you know, setting to learn from. I go to Rubaga, I'm talking to Navio, it's different. I go to, you know, Chireka, I'm talking to this person, it's different. I go to Makere, I go to Moobs, I didn't go as far as Mukono, but I wanted to. But mm -hmm. in all these places, I'm learning from different people. Oh, okay. So that's why, um, for a good start, for just diving into TV, how do you appeal to different people, you know? Do you switch it up? Are you still this, are you that, you know? And then then uh, the opening for Skizzy came in. Mm -hmm. um, the previous presenter wanted to leave, and they're like, hey, you, you're here, and this is probably your thing. You love music, you love entertainment. Why not do the show? And literally, they just it was, like a, it was like a Monday or a Tuesday. I'm in the office around uh, 1 p.m., we just finished recording. I gave all the footage back, and they're like, I'll get ready. You're going to do Skizzy today. Six. So how long did you do The Hood first? I did though? The Hood for eight months. Eight months. So yes. you've been doing Skizzy, should we say, about a year now? A year. I used to do both of them concurrently. Ah, oh, okay. So okay. Skizzy is about two years, then The Hood was the first eight months. Oh, ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you're a lawyer. Yes. Uh, did you ever at any point see yourself doing law? I still do. But I don't see myself in the, the active workforce. Oh, okay. I see myself in the background. I'd rather be the guy that you know, opens the firm and gives opportunity to lawyers, mm. as opposed to being the lawyer who you know, does you know, uh, the running around and chases the cases. Not that I don't respect it, because you know, my cousins, my friends have done law. I studied with them. Mm -hmm. But because I've, I've never wanted to be in law, I've never wanted to be that guy in the spotlight. I'd rather be the guy that helps from the from the shadows. That's interesting because yeah. you're on TV. Yeah. You're you're a rapper. Yes. You're on stage, so yes. you're in the spotlight in that way. In that in that in that world, yes. In this world, no. Okay. Yeah. And your mom. No. You said you know your mom at some point is like, okay, go out, fly, go mm. do your thing. Mm. When she found out, or she, did she know, like even before you graduated, that she, this TV thing was going to happen? The music thing is the one she found out first, and she found it in a very embarrassing way. Uh, high school, 
20, I was in my S5, yes, my senior five. Um, she gets a call from my headmaster. Okay. It's like, you need to come to pick your son. <laughs> you, what She's like, you I done? can't do it. It was a Friday night. She's like, I can't do it. Just send him home. This is what I did. Uh -huh. Friday night, uh, it was prep. Prep time. Everyone is in class. It's seven. We're reading really hard, and the whole school is quiet. And I left class. I walked out, went to the bathroom, and I, on my way back, there's a stage in the middle of the school, like a quadrangle. Okay. Right? Yeah. So I get on the stage. All by yourself? All by myself. There's no one outside. It's dark, right? It's dark. There's no one outside. And I start performing. <laughs> now, I wasn't screaming or singing or miming the words. I was just in my head. There was a stage in front of me. It's weird. I know. I know. I know. I'm but, like, okay. Uh -huh. But there's a lot. In my head, there was a stage in front of me. And I was imagining myself performing to, you know, bigger crowds. I'd never performed for bigger crowds. Okay. But you performed in front of like in school, school yes. I okay, had. okay. Mm -hmm. So my headmaster walks out and I'm like, I need to run. I try to run. run. He's like, Hey, boss, I have seen you. Come, come, must young come. man. So he came, <laughs> sat me down. He's like, What are you doing? I couldn't. It must have looked him. so bizarre, it though. Did. Huh? It did. It did. He actually thought I was on drugs. Or <laughs> <laughs> so the next morning, uh, hands me a suspension letter. He's like, You need to go home. So I go home. I'm explaining this to my mom. She, I, you, this is Saturday morning. She's waking up. I'm leaving boarding school. I'm coming back. And she's like, wow. Uh, let me go back. I will come back and we'll talk. Mm -hmm. I like, I need it. time. Yeah, to I need time this. to get this in. So we go, we come back to school. We go through the whole disciplinary bit. He's like, no, he's not on drugs. He's just very passionate about music. <laughs> and it ended there. <laughs> Okay, luckily. <laughs> then, fast forward into uh, uni, mm -hmm. they did a documentary on me. The Mascom class, mm -hmm. at the same year as my, my own, did a documentary on me. Okay. And they came, to, they came home to ask my mom, like, when did he decide to, you know, start doing music? Aha. Uh -huh. And then she picked up, and then that came in. And then TV, for her, it was more like, you know what, he's been on this path. I, and it's for me let me take the path of least resistance let me not force him to go where he doesn't want to be let mm. me accept where he is and find ways to support him so in certain scenarios she even paid for my first studio time oh you know it's yes. like, you know go go rap go make a song <laughs> and i made the song and i came back no by the time you're standing in the dark with mm. no people around and you're performing i mean any parent would be like, I think we're on to something. We're on to something. Well, I'm going to ask you now yeah. for your second request. Yes. Uh, second request. This is coming in from uh, Cardi B. Cardi B. Of all people. This is looking at me like, Cardi are you? You know, people are like, you know, Cardi B has potential, but she still has a long way to go. How she do does. you feel? She does. Um, I'm very, I was very impressed by her album, yes. um, Vision of Privacy. She's not the best role model. I'll, let's say that. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's accept the fact she's not the best role model, mm. but she's a very honest person. She is. Yes, she's the true definition of living her truth. Exactly. And that's what I love the most about her. It's a hit selector on 88.2 Sanyo FM. And with mm. me today on Select Select, I have Timothy Cole telling mm. us a few crazy things, performing... Yes to the dark. darkness <laughs> <laughs> freaking out his yeah, teachers my parents uh, um so you were saying that you know your mom paid for your first studio session yes, to record she, your first song yes when was that that was uh, 2011 yes 2011 i did a remix of a rick ross song called stay screaming mm. but i put that out because that was like you know i'm testing the water then i did another song uh, called Hands in the Stadium. Oh, wow, yay. Mm. And that's the one that people started, you know, okay. Started to feel. Okay, this this guy could do something. This Did you feel like something. it was hard to, 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 to be recognized, to break through, to be taken seriously? Not or that really. was never a worry for you? Not really. I was never I was never worried about breaking out or becoming who I think I'm going to be. Mm. I know I'm going to be great. I'm destined for it. I just have to be patient. That's all. I've never been... You have to pay the piper. Yeah, you know, whoever you think of, any rapper you think of now has done five years at least. Mm. You know, not forget the new breed, but the ones that, you know, we love and revere have done at least five years of, you know, startup time. 
Yeah. Even, even then, mm -hmm. there was some background work. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the same thing. Just do the work and it will come. Okay. Yeah. So have you been supported by other artists yes, in hip-hop yes. in Uganda? Yes. Because um, a lot of people remember the, the Luka Cyber. Yeah. Oh, man. That, that, was, that, a, was that was dope. That was dope. That was dope. <laughs> that was dope. I, I wish I came with the award. Let's put it here. It's like, yeah. But I'm not going to be vain. But, not to uh, listen about the award for yeah, people who don't know. Yeah. Come on. I mean, you know, not one. It was two awards. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 2017. Um, the Vuka Cypher verse of the year, Sweet 16 verse of the year, mm. and best collaboration of the year. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't all me, the fans stepped in, they're like, Yo, we like this guy, we like that verse, we're gonna vote for it. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was a telling moment. How do you, I, I consider Ryoga to be one of the um, best MCs in Africa. Mm -hmm. How do you win verse of the year on the same song as he is? And he, for most people, for the heads, the hip-hop heads will consider he had a better verse. But you're the guy that won. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That for me was a telling moment. It's like... So I, you, you felt like I'm on the right path. I'm on the right path. At least people believe in me. I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for the songs, the music has always been deep. Mm -hmm. I've never, there's never been a verse that's just, you know what, let me just do a verse for the hell of it. Every verse I've written is deep. And that verse was just to prove a point. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I have Big Trill, I have The Myth, I have Ryonga, I have Peter Miles, I have Nutty Nathan, I have Sent Nelly Said, I have Keiko, and hey, my name is in there. I can I deserve to be on this track. I deserve to be on this track. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, so in terms, I mean, it really starts like, you know, your it sounds like your journey is kind of just beginning. It's yes. just beginning to, to branch out and yes. head in the direction you want to go in. So what can we, I mean, what is your dream? What, what do you want to dream? see yourself? Um, where do I see myself? Mm. I've always had the passion of building a 360 entertainment company. Okay. But that's just the one side of the other bit. The other bit is, you know, the more entrepreneur side. I'd rather be bigger in business than I am in music. You have a music label, right? I well, you started a music label, I was it for one, a bit? Yes. Okay, it, but it now it's, it's no, no, it is still active. Okay, it's the one that handles my music. Okay, uh, Crown Ace. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very much still active, and I feel you know it's just in its growth, you know, stages. We just you know we now set off. Now let's go through the the turbulence mm -hmm. before we have a smooth flight. Okay, okay, yeah. uh huh. So. For me, the bigger goal is just uh, to be, I, I call it my five, my five core values. Strength, creativity, peace of mind. Um, man, I forgot the last two. I forgot the last, it's very embarrassing. <laughs> but you know, strength, creativity, peace of mind, family, and uh, there's one other guy. It will come to It me. will come to It me. will come to But me. those are the ones that I base my life on. Okay. In terms of strength, you know, what aspects of my life am I weak in? how can I be stronger in them? Mm -hmm. In terms of creativity, that's the music. How can I be most creative? Mm -hmm. And even when the music dies, when I'm, say, 40 years old, 50 years old, and I can't be rapping at, you know, clubs and whatever, how, how best can I be creative in that area? Mm -hmm. Peace of mind, you know, from G.O.D. to, you know, just life. Am I comfortable? Am I okay? Am I content with what I have? And then uh, family, man. When you come from a family that's humble, that's there for you, you also want to have the same thing for yourself mm -hmm. when you grow up, when mm -hmm. you're a dad and when you're a husband. Ah, yeah. you're, you're thinking about those things. I do, I do. I'm not going to lie. I do. Because I think most men normally are like, nah, I'm not thinking about that. You know, it will happen when it happens. Yeah, I know. But you see, most of my um, influences are people older than me. Speaking Not, of your influences, you yeah. mentioned Jay Z. You've talked Jay -Z, about Rionga. Yeah. Who are the lyricists you look at and you're like, yes? Um, I'm not gonna say lyricists. I'm gonna say hip hop uh, artists. Okay. For, For different reasons. reasons. What's the difference? Um, a lyricist is more passionate about the lyrics, the words, the, the way the words move. So in that bracket, I'd put Kendrick. I'd put uh, Nas. I'd put Jay Z. Okay. Then. Mm -hmm. A rapper is, you know, the bigger entertainer. He's still using words, but he's a bigger entertainer. In that category, I'd put uh, Jay, um, not Drake, I'd put Drake. 
I'd put uh, Africa, aka, and maybe even Casper Nieves. I'd put it in that bracket. Okay. Okay. Um, then they, I just saw this on the internet. You can live your whole life as a rapper, but the moment you step on stage, you have to become an MC. Ah. Yes. Okay, we're learning something new. Yeah, you have to become a performer. Mm. So now, I love Jay Z's performances. I love Kendrick's performances. I love Drake's performances. So all that combined would make me who I am now. Mm. I feel I'm actually a greater performer than I am a writer. You see me on stage, that's crazy. You mean... I saw you blankets and wine. Blankets and wine, mm. Shay Shay, crazy, okay. you know? And for me, that's where I'm strongest at. I love the stage. I love the lights, you know, the build-up, the music, just the live experience. And what about, like, TV? Do you feel that being on TV has also contributed to towards uh, like of your course. stage performance and presence of course man i'm i'm on skizzy every day mm. monday to friday 67 it's a platform in itself i feel like i have an upper hand from the rappers who are in my same age bracket because they don't have a daily platform where people get to see them mm -hmm. despite mm -hmm. the fact that i'm not rapping every day on the show i'd love to but it's a platform where they get to see me and you've interviewed so many big artists as well. Uh, so it's an opportunity every day to learn from some of the greats who come through your show. That's, that's, that's actually how the Shay Shay stage thing happened. She came, she met me on the, on the show. She came the second time. She's like, hey, I heard you should rap. Uh, can you do an interview for me at Blankets? I'm like, really? this is Saturday. The Black is on Sunday. The next day, the yeah. The next day. She's like, hey, can you do an interview for me? I'm like, yeah, cool, I can. She's like, okay, cool, just come through, meet me at the hotel, we'll go with the band and whatever. So we go to the hotel, then we come to Blankets, we had not practiced. There was no, <laughs> we didn't do sound check or anything. <laughs> Are you serious? And I swear to God, we didn't do sound check or anything. And then she's like, hey, I'm calling your brother Timothy Cord. Yes, like I step on stage, I'm like, these guys, I, I literally had to describe the song. Like I need a hip hop sound, but rock in there, yeah. Like, yeah. So I gave her the feel, gave her the bounce, took it from there. And because her band is very professional, they picked up on whatever I needed. Okay. Yeah. So I think we can safely say big things are coming. Big things yeah. are coming. Yeah. Before we wrap up, because unfortunately we're out of time. Oh, no. Out of time for today. Oh, no. Are you dating? Am mm -hmm. I dating? Mm -hmm. I was. Okay. I, um, I'd like to say I'm with. Oh, I put it, not I put it, not I put mm. it. What? I'm pursuing someone. You are pursuing someone? Yes. Okay. I don't want, I is don't she want, aware? <laughs> yeah, she is. She's very much aware. Okay. Very much aware. I don't want to lie to people and say, you know what, I'm not. But I'd like to say, yes, I am pursuing someone. And I don't want to put it out there. She knows. She's also like, you know what, baby steps. You see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so. Okay, well, you already talked about, you know, Evangelo and your father and a husband. Is that yeah. going to happen anytime soon or? Not in the near future. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's part of my goals, part of my dreams. And when I'm ready, it will happen. Well, thank you so much for coming on Celeb Select. Thank you. Pleasure getting to know you better and mm -hmm. getting to understand your vision. Mm. That's what you have. There's a lot of crazy in there. There's a lot of crazy in there, yeah, too. So your last song, one of your own. One of my own. Mm. This is uh, mm. Timothy Code, Hold On, Linda Cole. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, the latest release. It's off my debut album. Uh, it's coming out this year, 2018. Mm -hmm. It's called Crown Day. The story behind the album is Crown Day is the, the day you get your crown. It's the day you mature. It's the day you take on the responsibilities that are waiting for you. It's the day you become your own man, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to drop this year because I turned 25 this year. So that for me, that yeah, that's what yeah. <laughs> for me, 25 was like a milestone. It's like, what have you done in quarter century? What have you achieved? So Crown Day, when it actually drops this year, that song is on there. And the basis for the song, it sounds very off, by the way. You listen to the song, it's like, it sounds like he's bragging. <laughs> but the song is actually me saying, you're going to be great. Just be patient. Wait for it. I say, you know, I don't care what the deal is, all I want is gorillas, you know. But at the end of the day, he's like, you're just I'm just saying, I'm gonna be great, just wait. Hold on, hold on.